This is a, a, a butterfly jig. It's a new jig from Shimano. That fish is taking Andy around the boat. I'm using a Travala rod and a torso reel. Believe it or not, this rod is rated for up to 200 pounds. And I'll and tell you what, it just kicks the heck out of these fish. I see it. You're putting the screws for this and one you right know what? here. No matter what, I can turn the handle almost at all times. And that's that. First one in, baby. That's all. Northeast Angling. We're proud to present inshore and offshore saltwater fishing. We cover every species from fluke and porgies to stripers, sharks, and tuna. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations at neangling.com. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Toughest introductions we ever do. We're here at a Point Judith with Captain Mike Nito, Adriana Charters. We got bluefin tuna busting all around us, and we got to sit here and talk to you. <laughs> Mike, you said we're going to run into like 30, 40, maybe even 50 pound bluefin tuna today. All right, we're throwing small jigs, spinners. We got some new rods and reels from Shimano, some new jigs from Shimano we're going to try out, and I'm fired up to do this. Go get them. All right, now we got right. schools busting right behind us. We're tearing out of here, Andy. Let's go. Well, we ran up on this school of bluefin, and my first cast with a butterfly jig into it, and right away, I hooked up. And you know what? This is something awesome. No, no, Andy, I know I'm going to convert all you guys to, to this. Of course, I only brought two rings. Well, I'll take the second one. <laughs> now, Andy, we got we to gotta, you know, really get into this a little bit with me. Oh, there he is. This is a, a, a butterfly jig. It's a new jig from Shimano. That fish is taking Andy around the boat. I'm using a Travala rod and a torso reel. Believe it or not, this rod is rated for up to 200 pounds. And I'll and tell you what, it just kicks the heck out of these fish. I see it. You're putting the screws to this and one right here. No matter what, I can turn the handle almost at all times. And that's that. First one in, baby. That's all. <laughs> that's all. Showtime. Let's go. <laughs> We're going to start it up. We're going to go right Let's back go pick up another one. right there. And if you don't mind, I'm going to grab the other jig. <laughs> yeah. That's not a bad fish. Fish on! Butterfly jigs! We I come. Love them. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, oh. That's called screaming real. Hey, you want the effect, Andy? Oh, he just slowed down when I get it. <laughs> Here we go, boys. Here we go. Well, Rich made it made his first cast with a butterfly jig, and sure enough, he's in now. You know, Andy, what's incredible? And Mike, you said this earlier. These fish are feeding on little bait, yeah. right? Rain yeah. bait almost. And we're throwing four ounce, three ounce, two ounce butterfly Much larger jigs. jigs. We're throwing a jig that's almost five inches long. This is a And these fish are picking it up. This should not happen. Now, one of the techniques that we use here, Mike, you can just flip that out there real quick. One of the things you want to do is you're going to take the rod, you're actually going to hold it very close to your body. You know, you're actually going to get it under your arm, uh, actually under, under your arm, and it's a pumping action. And you never really let the line go slack. You're not letting the jig drop. Jig's always moving up in the water column, and it's acting like a wounded bait fish. Guys, I'm getting a little close really here. You can really see it there. You can really see it zipping through the water. 
I'm getting a little close with this uh, one, I guys. think Rich is going to need a hand from us. Yeah, you might want to. Mike, the net is in the console right behind you. And the funny yep. thing is, is, I'm looking in the water, and I'm seeing this bait. Andy, this bait is like less than an inch long. Yeah, uh, you know, it That's really doesn't matter with these jigs. I'm coming back, boys. He's coming up. He's coming up. There he is. He's on the top now. But the amazing thing is that they're feeding on bait that's an inch, and they're hitting a four-ounce jig. Mike, have you ever seen it before? Usually we try to match that. You got to. Yeah, no, but you know what? It's the action that's really critical yeah, here. That's what it is. The action, the retrieve. We cast out. You let it drop a few seconds. Start that retrieve, and they're on it. This is going to revolutionize the way people tune a fish. Absolutely. I'm telling you Especially that right now. Especially with bluefin. We're really getting more and more bluefin every year. we got a great bluefin season nice going fish. here. And this is the technique. Ready, Mike? Yes, sir. And that's going to be a fish in the boat, oh. gentlemen. Oh. And now, Rich, you can put a lot of pressure on that fish with that rod. Now, yeah, and this rod is rated for what? 200 pounds. Just go ahead and put as much pressure on it as you want. We got the drag set. That's a 50-pound braided line in there. It's actually a spider wire. We got a 50-pound Yozuri floral leader. And you know what? Those two assist hooks, that fish ain't coming off. Well, you know what? You got, we got to, you got to take a look at these two hooks, too, because that's incredible. I got them wrapped in a gill on this, too. Yes, Ready? pick them up, Mike. There we go. Baby, win it. it. There you are. That's a there nice fish. Now, we got, I got to take a good look. You got to, you got to see, Mike, the, the double hook, the way this thing is rigged. i never seen anything like it. Get it the tail. Oh, that's a nice fish. Yes, it is. That's a nice fish. Yeah. These are beautiful fish. Okay. You know, the, the average fish here, Mike, what do you say, an average size of these fish? That's about an average size. Look at the wow. two hooks. Both hooks, Andy. Yep. Both hooks. Both. You're not losing that fish. No, you think? Yeah. <laughs> and look how big that jig is compared to the bait. That is amazing. You can see the top of his dorsal. That's actually where the line came across and scraped him. Yeah. he was making that one run. Right. But that's a beautiful fish. Very important. We got a good floral leader on here. Watch your leader after every fish. Make sure it's, it's not nicked up. Uh, Rich, let's get that fish yeah, back yeah, in the water. Let's get him going. Let's get him going. And let's move on to the Mike, next get fish. you the hook in there. Let's get this fish in and let's get back on him. One's out, Mike. Yep. Now, I, I, you know, this is very exciting for us. When I first put, picked up this jig, I said, you know, I don't know, it's some kind of Ready? what's go. going on with it. But I'll tell you what, it really, exactly. really works. There you go. Let's get some more. Visit the Northeast Angling website at neangling.com for nationwide saltwater charter directory fishing news, and free fishing reports. You can also find dozens of techniques, tips, and tackle for every saltwater species. Now let's get back to the action. He's coming at me, he's smoking. Oh yeah. Oh, stay with me, stay with me. I, I can't catch up to this fish. He's coming right under the boat, Andy, look at this. Oh, there we go, here he goes. Oh, now he's back. All right, I'm over you. Oh, I knew these fish would Hey, watch my plug. braided line. We're cool, we're cool. I see ya. Come on back, come on back, come on back. All you right, know, we just everybody's got back. gonna, Rod, Rod, tip up. Oh man. You in, Mike? You know, we just got back here. We were with Captain Mike Nito, the Adriana. Mike, where are we now exactly? About six, seven miles south of Newport, Rhode Island. You know, we came out, Andy, we were in a wall of fog. We made it through the inlet, no problem. And now we found these fish busting everywhere. You know, one, one of the things we're doing here is we've got schools of fish, we're being patient, we get the right school up, and then we're moving very carefully on them and just throwing a variety off. Oh, we got a couple of fish in the butterfly jig. Rich picked out a Yozuri plug, a little surface plug, and Where's bang, that? right away got a follower, hooked up a fish. And he is in for the fight of his life here. This is a 20, 20 pound test big game on a, a Terramore rod with a Sedona, Andy, right? 6,000 yeah, Sedona. Little, on 6,000 Sedona. And let me tell you, I'm putting a screw to this fish. Now, Mike, yeah. I, Mike, I know you throw a lot of different <laughs> offerings here. What are you, some of the things that people can throw at these fish? Do the cripple herons. Uh, that works good. White, silver, even green. Okay, and the retrieve. How about the speed of the retrieve? Every day is different. You can do a fast retrieve, you can do an erratic shaking of the rod retrieve. A lot of times they'll grab it when it drops down. Okay. On the flood up. Yeah, you know, and you don't always have to whiz, whistle that, that jig in. A lot of times you're just going to work the fish and just give your jig the right speed. Yep. You got to vary your speeds because the different schools want different things at exactly. times. 
Now, Andy, you had you were out here yesterday yep. when you brought the boat up, and you were throwing that, that spro jig also. Yeah, right? I was throwing a spro jig and just basically a very, relatively slow retrieve, just keeping it in the school as long as possible. And I had no problems hooking yeah, up. Yeah, the spros work. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea to have a bring bring a big selection of work. Now, Mike, what time of year do you get this? When do you start? It usually starts in July. Okay, they and how long does it go? Oh, they they should be starting to head offshore pretty soon. Really? Yeah. And now what brought these fish in, in so close to the beach like this? You have a lot of rain bait in the area. Okay. And then and the rain bait's holding them, because I noticed we marked a lot of bait all through here. Oh, yeah. And actually, we got ourselves in an area where we're marking a lot of bait, and we just wait, we've been patient, seeing the right fish Yeah, you don't want to leave it. Eventually, they're going to find you. Yeah, you yeah. know what you said, that. Now, <laughs> now, any recreational angler that wants to do this, Mike, what do they need to do? To, what do they need to have on board? What kind of permits? And how do you get them? You need um, a highly migratory species permit. And also shock, doing any shock fishing. Okay, that also is the same permit. It's National Marine Fisheries. You can buy them online if you have a credit card. Okay, so it's nmm uh, www.nmfs.com. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Dot com. And how much does that cost? Twenty-two dollars. Oh, that's not bad. You need strong arms. And yeah. and right now you get to, <laughs> right now I believe you can only keep one. Right. But that and can change tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And an interesting measurement. How do they measure these fish, Mike? From the nose to the inside of a fork at 27 inches. Okay. That, that's, that's a great point, Andy, because you see a lot of those fish. Now, what is it, 28 inches on the bluefin? 27. 27 inches. Oh, I got color on this one. Yep. We got some chatter on the radio going on. Yep. Yeah, we got you know, a lot of boats around us. A couple boats us. in the area. A couple boats out, out north of us, and sure enough, these guys are getting on the fish. Well, this guy's circling. I got him under the boat now. Yeah. I got color. Now, on big nice difference fish. here with the spinning rod we'll compared to, to the conventionals. Take that, Andy. Now, we had a couple of these fish already. We got them on a, we've got them on a torium, and we got them on the new torso reel. And we basically had these fish to the boat in almost no yeah. time at all. There's no horse in any yeah. fish with, with a spinning rod. Yeah, with a spinning rod, you had just to say that. <laughs> in for the game. <laughs> he saw the net. <laughs> you urgent. <laughs> now, Mike, I see you netting these fish. Yeah. Why? Why? You, why do you net these fish? Uh, you don't want to lip them. That's right. For sure. And uh, you you want to land them, you know, without really giving them a lot of damage or anything, because we're going to be releasing. But a release, you know, right? One hundred percent. You're only allowed one, so. Right. You know, if you catch 20, 30 in a day, you know, wow. you want to. Yeah, and now today, to today with the net technology today, we get these big Prabel power lock nets. They are perfect yeah, for this. Yeah, they are. That, we that, put some very big bluefin in that if net. If you look at the mouth of that net, it is almost as large right. as mine. In fact, if we were to toss, <laughs> if we were to toss Rich That's over nice for torturing us with this fish, we could net him and get him back in the boat. <laughs> there we go. Oh, baby. <laughs> look at that. That's that little hydro tiger plug from Yozuri. Uh, you know what, Mike? Leave him hard. Nice Let me get plug. that hook right at him so I don't, I don't want those other hooks to grab. Yeah, yeah, we have that to hooker, Andy? Yeah, we yeah, do right something. Because this, this like, fish right is on the handrail, Andy. thin, right in the lip, and this fish can be released without a problem whatsoever. I'm actually going to grab the net for a little leverage, get a hold mm -hmm. on that, if I can, and just turn them over, Mike. Once again, we're just trying to be gentle with these fish. We are trying to get them back, get them back in the water. All right, you got him by the tail, Mike? You want to get him in? His tail's wrapped up. All right, we're clearing out. You yeah. bought him. Oh, slow down, Drop him back. Oh, look at that. I love nice. This is a beautiful fish. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Torpedo, right? Right in? Yeah. Yep. Here we go. See you oh. later. I should get a, wow. Yeah, God. I should get, a job. Ten, should get a 10 on that for no splash on entry. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right. Get back in. Let's move up. Let's go get him. Andy, we just brought in about what? About a 25-pound bluefin tuna on a spinner with a with a Yozori Hydro pencil. Right. And what happened? Yeah, we get a ton of line twists on these because when the, these fish take drag on a spinning reel, the line is getting twisted because of how it comes off the spool. It's, it's this fresh. reel is unusable right now for our next fish, and we got to now get this twist out. We cut the rig off right above the swivel. Do your thing, Rich. All right, we're going to let that back into the tide. With no, into, the, into the water with no weight whatsoever right. now. It's just nope. open line, and we're going to let it pull off the spool, and we're going to drag the line behind the boat. We're probably going to get out a little more line than, than what we had out. We're just going to get that line out, just get it clear, and then we're just going to let it spin out. All the twist is going to come out. That's exactly what it does. All the memory is going to come out, and this rod will be usable again. Otherwise, if you went to cast this, yep. birds, now, a huge bird's nest. The twist. resistance of the water gives you enough pressure where you can see the bend in that rod, right? Look at that. You see the bend in the rod, and that's with no weight on there. Right. And now what's going on right now is exactly what you said. That line is unraveling and straightening out, because if you didn't do this, you would not be able to take this plug and throw it out again, because right. you'd open that bale up and woof. You're absolutely right. 
And a good tip is something, anytime you're fishing for any fish, you take a lot of drag out of your spinning reel, you're probably going to have to stretch those lines. It's a great tip, and I'm sure people will take advantage of that one. I'll bring that sucker in, let's go. All right. Visit the Northeast Angling YouTube channel for hundreds of videos, including full-length episodes, exciting clips, product reviews, and instructional videos. And now, the exciting conclusion of Northeast Angling. Back here with Mike Nito, Adriana Charters. We're a few miles out of Point New Judith. Mike picked up a Yozuri surface cruiser, threw it to some busting bluefin, and he might have a little yeah. problem. You know Let's, what? Uh, Is it time? Boat. Yeah. Go after this All right, we're gonna move the, uh, we're gonna move on this fish. Yeah. yeah. Mike, Ain't got much okay. line left. You know, he looks like he's, I'm gonna clear that rod out of the way. So Mike, easy. I'm gonna move on this fish. You tell okay. me what you want me to do. All yeah, right. One of the Keep problems going. we have out here, we're fishing 20 pound line. And Mike, I know you talked about this before. What's your plan? When do you say move the boat, not move the boat? Uh, usually when uh, Guys, you start getting a little low on lines, a good time to, uh, to move. You know, one of the things, slow it up a little bit. Yep. One of the things Mike, Mike's going to try and do is he's got to make sure that he keeps that line, yeah. that rod, bending that rod at all times when the moves, boat's moving forward. The more line that you have out too that he strips, it, it puts more pressure on everything too. Yeah. It can bow. Even though your line appears to be over here, the fish can actually be, you know, off to the side and just has the bow in the lines. That's a good point. And the driver of the boat really needs to follow the rod tip. If the fish even comes up on top somewhere, you've got to look and see where the line is in the water. Yeah, Mike, I just need you at any point in time, you tell me what you want me to do. I got gotcha. you. No, we're fine. Seem to be good now? Yeah, I'm starting to. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, Mike, the initial, oh, that thing is on. the initial run, that's one of the best, that's, that's a better fish. Yes, but the initial is. run of that fish was incredible. He took that plug and he just streaked and sprayed right across the yeah, surface. Yeah, that, that blow up on the plug. That was, was nice. nice. And you know, if you look be back better. behind us here real quick, guys, you can see you've got busting schools still around the boat. And you know, it's tough. You, you got a big fish on, you got schools around, you're sitting there going, God, I hope one of them comes close enough so we can like double up. Either that or Mike breaks that one <laughs> off. I know so that you fought a lot of big fish in your time from giant tuna, big sharks, 63 pound bass the other day on your boat. Yep. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now on the spinning rod. Well, this spinning reels are different than, if you're fighting on a spinning reel, it's totally different than fighting on a conventional reel. Uh, with a spinning reel, you don't want to reel against the drag. You don't really use the spinning reel itself as to work the fish in. You use the rod to work it in. You and the reel the is just picking up line. That's all the reel is. Uh, the spinning reel, that's all it's made for is to pick up the line that you bring in with your rod by pumping it. And another good tip is always keep that rod bent. Always. Yeah, yeah good bend in the rod. There's no way that fish is going to shake those plugs out. Now, nope. Mike, on the, on the, uh, the spinning reels, you prefer using mono, right? Correct, yes. And that's, uh, you know, tell me why. Uh, again, for the stretch properties in, in the material itself, and it doesn't beat you up or nothing. Watch your line right there. Okay. Kind of in the back of the boat. Mike, the braid Mike gets coming to visit us. Excuse me? I said the braid gets a little dangerous on a yeah, stage, too, right? Sure, you really yeah. got to be careful. Especially if you use shore anglers. You get it hang up on the bottom. Yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. try wrapping it around your hand, that's for sure. And Mike, I think you, got, you do have the fish of the day on there, don't you? Most definitely. <laughs> it's not in the net yet. This is true. But, Mike, uh, how long have you been doing this out here? Uh, I've been tuna fishing since the late 80s. Okay. We started tuna fishing and we, had, we used to have a large population of yellowfin, not this close, but they kind of diminished in time. And you said, actually, we were looking at that school's blowing up and both Annie and I and you yourself also, though we've seen a couple yellowfins maybe mixed right, up. Right, a little big, there's some big, certainly some bigger fish here. Do you have yeah. that occasionally in here? Uh, not that I'm really aware of, but again, it falls under that 72. That's what yep. you never know. And this is this is what you look for. It's close to the beach, you know. Absolutely. Seven, six, five miles off. We've seen them even closer, right? right. What did you see the other day? Uh, we, I was only three miles off three the beach, miles. right off of Sakonet. They guy's were there. Tight. Well, that's the, the great thing. I mean, we're fishing out of a 22 foot trident here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this is the birth. You're seeing really a birth of a great bluefin fishery that the small boat anglers are going to be able to enjoy down. for a long time nice. to come. Well, Mike, once again, you didn't disappoint us. You like the for us, you like the tuna guy. And you got a shot at this fish. Yeah, I got him now. Here we you go. You know what? We switch that over to that surface cruiser. Oh, oh man, right, Manny? You know, I know you're a big striped bass, blackfish, and just about everything else. But this tuna thing, we're just gonna keep coming here for this. <laughs> you know what? Now this was on a plug. You had this fish on for a long time. Oh man, that is a good-looking fish. <sighs> that really is. 
This Great. is a beautiful fish. Is that, you want to take that one, Andy? He's been out I think this for... one we're going to keep for the table. Yeah, because he looks a little wiped out. That fish was on for a while, and we wanted one to take home and eat. Works out the best. Mike, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, you know, the wind's Thanks. coming up here a little bit. It is time to get moving on here. And uh, fog's rolling in. Heck of a day. Thank you for watching Northeast Angling. You can learn more about techniques, tackle, and destinations as seen on this show at neangling.com. See you on the water.